um, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so, um, Erica, was that you on good, on um, Black Friday? So her and Scooter went shopping. We're we gonna turn the lights back on at some point, or we can just sit in the dark though, if you guys want, and sing Kumbaya. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, um, the next thing we'll be putting this camera somewhere where it's not in in your face up here, so I can see it. Although Robert, it's kind of nice to have it right here. I got it. <laughs> Well, good morning. So today we're going to talk about how to deal with four problems during the holidays. I don't know that this is going to be anything that you don't know. Eh, maybe. Maybe actually some of it. But um, people get overwhelmed. I, I, I have a lot of phone calls. I have a lot of folks come and visit. I have uh, a lot of uh, families who struggle during this time. Some of you already had Thanksgiving and had that struggle. And so I want to talk about four things and what something you can do. We're going to talk about dealing with uh, worry, anxiety, stress, and being overwhelmed. Doesn't that sound like just wonderful things to talk about this morning? Aren't you excited? <laughs> so, but let me tell you one thing. It's going to be later in the message, but I thought, you know, I, I kind of want to share this story up front. So I know a grandfather whose grandson works for Universal Studios. And this grandfather's grandson got him tickets, and he and his wife went to uh, Universal Studios, had a great time. And so not only did he thank his grandson, he wrote a personal letter to the president of Universal Studios, which is kind of cool. Well, not only that, he got a reply from the president of Universal Studios, who then wanted to have lunch with this man, and so he went and had lunch with the, I mean, this is just somebody who works over in Orlando. Had lunch with the, with the president of Universal Studios, and then he promoted his grandson oh because awesome. of his grandfather. Now, now here's, here's what I want you to know about life. When you go through life and you are distracted by these four things, worry, you're, you're, you're thinking about uh, uh, something that could happen. You're, you're praying about the future and you're praying the wrong way. Anxiety, when, when worry builds up, it begins to then short circuit how you think and all you can think about are troubles and trials and struggles. And then it goes from there and becomes stress, which stress is so good for us and our bodies and, you know, all these things. And then, of course, from that to just being overwhelmed where you're just like, I just can't handle it. And so today we're going to talk about this idea of why we do this, but, but let me just give you the summary so that if you need to take a nap, you'll, you'll get one in, okay? So here it is. One of the main reasons why we're stressed out and overwhelmed, if we're honest, is that we just don't trust God. And we can call it whatever we want, we can pretend it's whatever we want it to be, but the truth is there comes a point where sometimes we just say, you know, I think I can handle this. And the truth is, God doesn't always change our circumstances. I mean, we would, love, we would love to have the genie God, where we just pray and we rub the genie lamp and God does what we want. And some people think that. They think, oh, if I pray a certain way, if I say certain words, if I do certain things, then God will do what I want him to do. He's not a genie God. So he doesn't always do what we want him to do. By the way, if he did everything I wanted him to do, then this weekend there will be people in Orlando who are now on the side of the road because they cut me off in traffic. Okay, so, so we don't want God to do what we want him to do all the time, right? So, and, but, you know, when it comes to something big, sometimes we're like, you know, gosh, God, why don't you answer my prayer the way I want? Here's the deal. The amazing thing about God is even when he doesn't change your circumstance, he can change you. And he may not change what's happening to you. He may not change the difficulty. He may not change the physical, mental, emotional struggle, whatever it is. But even in the middle of dealing with that, he can let you know that he's with you. He can let you know that you can have his peace even when things don't go the way you want them to go. So I'm going to just give you just, just four tips today for each one of these things. We're going to talk about the, all, each one of these things in order. Number one, relieve worry by focusing on your blessings. You know, they have the old hymn that said, count your blessings, name them one by one. And that seems like kind of a trite song, but the truth is, so often, some of us could eliminate worry so easily. This, this idea, because... <laughs> 
You know what worry is? It's just focusing on your problem. It's taking whatever your problem is and just and just you just you're looking at it and you're nurturing it and it's all you can think about and you just over and over and over and here's what it says in scripture. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. So if this word in the Greek for worry here, there's several different words for worry, but this one in the Greek is the same word that Jesus used when he talked to Martha, basically saying, you are distracted by many things. Now, I don't know about you, but worry can distract me and you. Worry helps us not to enjoy this moment. Some of you are not even listening to me because you're worried about something. Worry is essentially a prayer when you're not trusting God. It's not a prayer to God. It's, it's a focus. It's a, it's a meditation on what you can't change. And then it says, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Is not life more important than food? Mm, okay. Okay. <laughs> and the body more important than clothes. It's definitely more important than clothes. I got to go shopping yesterday. I had to. I ran our Christmas lights. Went to hang up the Christmas lights yesterday, and, and Kristen, and they were broken. So we had to go to the favorite store, Walmart. I was overdressed. I wore pants and shoes. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> Isn't life more important than clothes? I think everybody at Walmart thinks that. Absolutely. <laughs> you struggle with that. Listen, you go to Walmart. If you're feeling down about your dress and you're thinking, you know, Eric, I just don't have any nice clothes. I just, on the way home, or, I don't know, you know, there's one right here. It's right here. Just, just, it's five minutes from church. So just when you leave here, just go walking in. Go down, go down to where the hamburger is. That's usually about where they are. Just go down there, and there's somebody there that you'll go, thank God. God. These are the nicest clothes I've ever had. So if you're struggling, but so much of it, let's be honest, so much of it has to do with perspective. Let's be honest. We may don't, we maybe don't like what we have, but our worries are often about something we want. And, and so we get focused on the wrong thing. So like I say, go to, go to Walmart, you're counting your blessings. And then it says, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns. I am sorry, this is very ADD of me, but I look like a Oompa Loompa because this thing is on the purple. <laughs> Oompa Loompa. Much better. Okay. Sorry, I kept looking up. Oh gosh, now I look like an Oompa Loompa. And then it says, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Now, here's something really interesting. I was reading one of the commentaries. They talked about this, and I never thought about this verse this way. Birds don't worry about what they eat. I mean, as far as we know. But they still work. They still have to do something. Some people think, well, I just pray, and God will make it happen. The Bible never says that. It actually, There's actually a verse that says, if you don't work, you don't eat. It's the idea that if you want God to do something, it doesn't mean you just sit still in a corner. Now, there's times that we need to be still. Exodus 14, 14, Old Testament, where Moses looked at the people and said, the Lord will fight for you. You need to be still, because they were freaking out, right? And it's easy to get freaked out. There's those times we have to get still, but that's our heart. But there's many times that we still have to do what God wants us to do. We can't just let life happen to us. So the birds of the air, God's providing for them, but they still have to go and gather it. They still have to put the food in their mouths. They still have to go out of their way. And then it says, are you not much more valuable than they? Time out. Do you hear what Jesus is saying here? This is a huge difference from any other religion in the world. Because he's looking, Jesus is looking at these people and he's saying, do you realize how valuable you are? See, every other religion says, "You maybe if you do this, you'll please God. Maybe if you do this, you'll please God. Maybe if this happens, you'll please God. Maybe if you follow these things, you'll please God. Maybe, do you want me to open that for you? Maybe if, you know, you do these things, then maybe God will be happy. Jesus says, you're more valuable 
then all these birds, okay, you can, you can eat them, just give me a hard time. Not potato chips, it could be worse. All right. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single gray hair to his head? No, you can do that. Who can add a single hour to his life? So if you're worried about your health, if you're worried about it, listen, life has no guarantees. We are here. Anybody like me feel like this year went a little too quick? Anybody feel like what happened? I like woke up and I'm like, what? And then it says, and why do you worry about clothes? Go to Walmart. No, it says, see how the lilies of the field grow. They don't labor or spin, yet I tell you not Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. When's the last time you picked up a flower and looked at it? You people are way too busy. Remember when you were a little kid and you actually looked at flowers? When's the last time that you stopped all your busyness and even looked at a weed? Uh, even the weed flowers are pretty. As you're mowing, just stop one day and go, wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> the God who created all of those things absolutely loves you. He loves you. We worry about all these things, and yet God absolutely loves you. He cares about you. You're worried about things that you can't fix. You can't change. You can't change that person that you're trying to change. What they did, I know, is terrible, but you can't make it different. You can't go back. You can't undo that. You can't undo that thing you said. You're not sure what's going to happen tomorrow. You can't make that medical test come out the way you want. And so what can you do? You can trust God who clothes the flowers of the field and feeds the birds. So stop. Smell a rose. Watch a bird. There's plenty down here. They're all around our building here. Some nice cardinals, by the way. Blue bird, blue jay. Not even Solomon in all his splendor. When I worry, make a Thanksgiving list. I hope that if you didn't get some time to be thankful this weekend, if you didn't get time to be thankful this weekend, I hope that you at least will think of something. And let's do this before we go any further. I want you to close your eyes. Unless you already have, some of you may have. <laughs> Close your eyes. I just want you to think of three things you're thankful for. Just take a moment and do that. Okay, look back up here. If you can, unless you're napping. Some of you are thankful for that little nap. There's a guy named John, I don't even know how to pronounce his last name, but it's a book called A Simple Act of Gratitude. And he talked about how he was in his life, he was at a hard place in his life. And he was going through life and he had gotten to where his relationships were bad. His life was difficult. He was out of work, had all kind of things going wrong. And he decided one day, for whatever reason, that he would write a thank you note every day for a year. And so every day for a year he wrote a different thank you note to people. Here's what he discovered. It wasn't that he sent thank you notes to people to get something from them. He said thank you notes, just thanking all kind of people in his life. But what happened during that time is that his attitude changed as he became thankful for what was around him. Number two, not only do we leave worry by focusing on our blessings. Number two, remove anxiety as you give prayers for problems and praises for blessings. Anxiety is essentially extreme worrying. It is the, what's the race called? I, I, I slipped my brain. What's the race called that are extremes? What are those called? Where you run through mud and... Iron Man? Iron Man Savage, yeah. Okay, thank you. It's the, listen, anxiety is the savage race of worry. It's basically you take worry and you multiply it. You take worry and you begin to get paralyzed by it. Philippians 4, Paul says this, Do not be anxious about much. I don't know about you, but that's my policy. It's not really in the Bible. I mean, I have certain things that I like to be anxious about. I feel like it's okay. I mean, they are my kids. I like to be a little anxious about them. I mean, it is this important. I can be, right? No, no. 
Don't be anxious about anything. And then it continues. Paul says, but in everything, by prayer and petition, basically you're praying and you're asking. And then it says, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. And here's the idea here. It's the idea that when you pray, even when what you're dealing with, you can't figure out, which by the way, you can't figure out, you still can have peace. It transcends your understanding. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to be in control of everything. You don't have to fix everything, guys. We'll guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Now, let me show you what my prayers are like in this area, okay? Let's just pretend this nice Texas cup is worry. And so I say, oh, God, I'm... Um, you know, Lord, I'm worried about this person. I'm worried about this thing. This thing's really bothering me. And I'm just going to lay it at your feet, Lord. And Lord, I just lay that at your feet. Oh, I thank you for the peace that passes understanding. And Lord, I think if I could just fix that, I think everything would just be okay, God. And I, this, man, what am I going to do about this anymore? Oh, God, I just want to lay this at your feet, Lord. I just want to trust you. With that problem, Lord, thank you for the peace. How am I going to deal with that? I'm not really... Do you pray like I pray? <laughs> well, let's be honest. We lay it at the Lord's feet, and then we go and get it again. Uh, uh, I remember they talk about us being living sacrifices, and somebody said, we're living sacrifices that climb off the altar. And they were like, God, take everything I am, but not that. You know, And God, I trust you with everything, except that one thing I want to worry about. Do not be anxious about most things, some things, anything. This is one of the hardest things to practice. I remember Peter Lord's wife, Johnny Lord, saying that when she would go to pray, she would imagine herself coming before God and going, God, here's this pro problem or person or issue. And then she would turn her hands over just to, as a way of saying, okay, I'm not picking it up again. And we tend to pick it up and drag it right up. We go, here, God, oh, I feel so much peace. I'm so glad I dealt with it. Wait a second. Peace overcomes confusion. Now, for those of you who don't know who Seneca is, Seneca was uh, basically a philosopher who worked for Nero. Uh, many scholars think that Paul probably knew this guy, Seneca. Seneca has some hilarious sayings, by the way. When you get home, Google Seneca. The guy was awesome. And, but it and may have become a Christian before he died. There's actually some uh, truth to that, it looks like. And Anyway, so Seneca said this about life. And this is way back. He worked for Nero. Imagine working for a guy who, if you upset him, he killed you. A guy who killed several... The guy who said, you know, who, who it says played the fiddle as Rome burned, who then blamed Christians and made them into torches. That's who this guy worked for. And listen to what he said. He said, true happiness is, listen, to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. So what does that mean for believers? It means, Father... I'm going to live this moment. Now, can I tell you where I struggle with this the worst? I can be in a car full of people. And I can be driving and having a good time. Until one of you evil people <laughs> pull in front of me and slam on your brakes or tailgate, right? And then all of a sudden I go from trusting God and having a good time with you to no longer living in the moment. Now I'm living in the other car, right? <laughs> and they're trying, right? And, and, you know, I'm learning, I'm, I'm slowly learning that people, it, I grew up in Miami where they actually are trying to kill you. Here, people just don't know how to drive. And it's okay, it's okay, because I'm sometimes that person, right? The truth is, we do that with every worry if we're not careful. We will live in another moment and not enjoy this moment. We're so busy and worried and rushing that we don't take time to enjoy the people that are right next to us. We're so busy getting online and talking to people across the world that we're not talking to people that are in our face. We're doing Facebook and not face face. When I'm anxious, spend time praying and praising. If you'll take time to praise the Lord, it'll change your perspective because you'll realize how awesome God is. 
Relieve worry by focusing on blessings, anxiety by praying for problem and praising and blessings. And number three, gain peace by filling your mind with songs and scripture. So you go from anxiety and worry to this idea of stress. Stress is when your body is responding to a threat. Stress can be a good thing, okay? Stress can be a good thing. If you're driving and somebody cuts you off and you swerve, your blood pressure goes up. Why? Because you had to take action to get away from that person. But what you do next with that is when you decide whether that's appropriate response or not, right? The same thing is true in life. We are pushing and running so hard, we allow worry to become anxiety, and we allow anxiety then to become stress, and we, our blood pressure is high, and we overeat, and we try to uh, sedate ourselves because we have just taken more and more and more on. The Hebrews understood this, so they used the word shalom for peace. It's the idea of peace and prosperity that... When you have peace, you prosper. When you have peace, you're blessed. You enjoy your life. When's the last time you really had peace? This is what Paul says in Colossians 3. Let the peace that Christ gives, so he gives it, control your thinking. By the way, this word for control your thinking is an umpire. It's the idea when you start getting freaked out and you start focusing on the wrong thing and you start to get stressed out, that you can make a choice to say, okay, God, you're my umpire. Help me to focus on what you want me to focus on instead of what I want to focus on. You make the call. Because you are called together in one body to have peace. Always be thankful. That's the word Eucharist. Always be thankful. And then let the teaching of Christ live or inhabit you richly. Use all wisdom. And then listen to what you do next. Listen to this. Use all wisdom to teach and instruct each other. By singing psalms. See, you didn't even know. Some of you were just waiting for the sermon to get done. I've heard pastors say, I can't wait for the music to get done so church can start. Evil pastors. They're evil. <laughs> Dave, they're evil pastors. <laughs> You've heard about them? Thanks. <laughs> singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. By the way, if you only like hymns, you're not obeying scripture. But if you only like choruses, you're not obeying scripture either. It should be every kind of song, and we use it to teach each other and to learn, and then we have thankfulness in our hearts to God. By the way, one of the best things that can happen to you is that you leave here, and one of these songs gets stuck in your head. Because you'll be somewhere else, and you'll be thinking of something else, and all of a sudden you'll have that never once song, which I love. Thank you for doing that today. I had asked Dave to do that song today. It's a great song. It's one of my favorites. It's the idea that no matter what's happened to me, God, you never, ever left me. You've always been with What a great song to get in your head when you're going through a hard time. <laughs> Everything you do or say should be done to harass other people. <laughs> to obey our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, your Lord. And in all you do, give, what's the next word? Nice. Give thanks to God the Father through Jesus. When you are overwhelmed, God can give you peace. When you are overwhelmed and overcome, God can give you peace. When I'm stressed, read scripture. Spend time in the Bible. See what God's done. He's always taking care of everybody. By the way, he's taking care of you. You're here. And the day you're not here will be the best day of your life if you're a Christian. One day I won't be here and we'll be singing that song that we sang at the end. And it's a great thing. Grumbling and gratitude are for the child of God in conflict. Be grateful and you won't grumble. Grumble and you won't be grateful. Bully ground. That's the best I could do. I don't do a very good Billy Graham. You guys have no idea. By the way, anybody under 30 has no idea who Billy Graham is. You ever heard of Billy? Yeah. They still know who Madonna is, though. And the dwarfs. Number four. Gain perspective, listen to this, by going outside and realizing God's power and love for you. When you're overwhelmed, you need control alternate delete. Yeah. Those days when you're at work, listen, some of you get break time. I know some of you don't. Some of you get break time. Sometimes for your break, don't go in the break room. Sometimes on your break, just if they'll let you. Some of you have key cards and stuff. I'm going to get some of you fired here, but... Go outside if you can. If nothing else, look outside. If you can't look outside, buy a poster with nature on it. They actually said that even a poster with nature on it slows our heart rate. Did you know that? That's how weird we are. We're like, it looks like nature. It looks like 
but it's true. It's true. So, so why? Why does that make a difference in us? Gain perspective by going outside when you're worried. Go outside. You know, spend time looking at what God has done. Listen to what the psalmist said, David said. When I consider your heavens. When's the last time you looked up at the stars? On a day like this, you better take a walk. I don't care if it's 12 feet. Go outside and breathe. The works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you set in place. What is mankind that you're mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? I mean, our earth is at just the right angle, just the right tilt, just the right distance for us to even have seasons the way we do. What a coincidence. Ice floats. Ice shouldn't float. It floats. God did that. Because if it didn't float, the earth would be frozen most of the year. There's just so many little things that had to come together because God put the order of the universe together. So take a walk and realize how small you are, how awesome God is. But here's the awesome part. That awesome God who created everything absolutely loves you. So when I'm overwhelmed, take time to focus on the blessings of creation and God's love for me. You might be here today and maybe you're trying to handle everything on your own. You are worried about something you've done or you're worried about something someone else has done and it's time to give that to God and to not keep picking it up and to say, God, I'm going to trust you with this and God, I'm going to praise you in the middle of this and God, I'm going to thank you in the middle of this trial and this struggle and realize that God is in control and you can trust him. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Christ, we don't do a formal invitation where people come forward, but I'll be here after the service. And you can say, Eric, I want to give my life to Christ. Maybe you're here today and you just need prayer. I'll be here after the service. You can say, Eric, would you pray for me? We're going to have our time of offering in just a minute. As you give, you just say, God, thanks for what you've given to me, and you give what God's put on your heart today. Thanks for being here today. I hope as you come into this season, this might be one of those sermons you need to put in your car. Because as you come into this season, you can get distracted by ham. <laughs> and some other dumb thing and yet the God of the universe loves you and he cares for you and he can give you peace today let's go to the Lord and pray Father thank you for today I thank you for your word Lord I thank you for these simple truths as we recognize your awesomeness and your power and we get still and we thank and praise you that you take our anxiety, you take our worry, you take our stress. Father when we feel overwhelmed you take all of that and through your Holy Spirit you pour your peace into us. I pray for that one today who just needs to know your peace. Father, I thank you that you can give us as a church peace, and I pray that would happen here. As people come to this place, they would sense your peace. So, Father, for that one dealing with huge struggles today, I pray that even in the midst of their trial, that you would give them your peace. Father, for that one who doesn't know you yet, that today would be the day they surrender to you. Thank you for this time, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For our closing song, our time of giving, you give what God's put on your heart today.